I'm not ending this video until I win it all with NKU. Last year, we ended up making an Elite 8 run, and then we got invited to join the MAC along with landing two 5-star recruits, so the program is slowly getting better, making this the best roster we've ever had, and since I'm going to be playing through numerous seasons today, I'm only going to jump into tournament games. We're starting the season ranked 14th, and even though we didn't finish first in the MAC, we ended up making the conference championship so we could get back into the tournament this year, but we would have to beat 9-seeded Miami, Ohio first. And they were currently playing really well, so with halftime approaching, even with this John Cummings layup, we were still trailing by 7, and we needed to make our comeback pretty quickly. Small forward Elias Witt ended up hitting a deep 3 here despite not being great at them, and then, with less than a few minutes remaining, Awadi Teal got us within 1, but it seemed like it wouldn't end up being enough with this missed shot and the slam on the other end of the floor. Isaiah Mason clutched up for us though when it mattered the most, and with 15 seconds left, he might have missed this one which would have given us the lead, but a few passes after we got the rebound, he made up for it, drilling this in the Red Hawks player's eye, and with Miami Ohio's last second heave just missing to the left of the basket, we were officially MAC champions, which got us the 7 seed in the South region, but we had to play against Houston in the first round, and that didn't feel fair. They were severely underseeded, and we didn't come out playing our best, as you can clearly see from this possession, so this 3 from freshman Matt Love was extremely needed. He won 6th man of the year in the MAC, which he definitely deserve for the way he played, but Houston was scoring points way more consistently than us, so we went into the half down by 9, and if anyone was going to save the season, it would have to be Isaiah Mason, because it seemed like he was the only one that could shoot today, as with 2 minutes remaining, he was able to get us back within 8. The guys clearly didn't want to lose to Houston again, and after the ball somehow didn't end up rolling into the hoop, all of a sudden, it was only a 4 point game. The Cougars would end up making their free throws though, and it took us way too long to find an open shooter to take the three, so Houston was able to run out the rest of the clock and they knocked us out in the first round. This season ended up being a disappointment and in the end Villanova won it all. I still got a contract extension though and that's because I brought in two amazing recruits. We were losing two of our starters but the team was still better than it was last year and we managed to go 28-1 and with our only loss being to rival Cincinnati and after beating Ball State by 9, we had won the MAC for the second straight season. Even with one loss, we weren't a one seed, but surprisingly a five seed instead. That gave us North Dakota State in the first round, and I felt like our seeding was disrespectful for the type of season we had had. With the way the Bison came out shooting though, we could be in trouble, and I couldn't imagine getting put out in the first round again, so I was thrilled to see John Cummings help us bounce back near the end of the half. Matt Love tied up the game with this mid-range score, but after he got knocked over on the screen to end the first, which the refs completely ignored, he gave up a wide open 3, and from there, it just continued to go downhill for us. It was like everybody was trying to choke as we kept giving up buckets, and Ben Clausen put this one in to keep us within 7, but this and one basket with about 2 minutes remaining would destroy us, and coming back now would be almost impossible. Point guard Matt Love did bring it back to a 6 point game with this 3 though, and then they decided to throw the ball out of bounds on this play, which allowed us to somehow bring it back within a possession, but we left a guy wide open open off of the inbounds throw, and sophomore center Adam Randall lost the ball on the other side of the court, so in the end, we got upset and eliminated from the tournament early on again. I had work to do to get NKU a championship, and Kansas just got themselves another one. We did lose quite a few players, but every starter this year was a junior or senior besides Justin Copeland, and we started the season in the top 25 and then won the Maui Invitational over UCLA, so we were undefeated going into conference play, and we didn't lose a single game in the regular season, but we lost our conference championship to Ball State, which was extremely frustrating because it caused us to be a four seed in the tournament. We couldn't afford to lose in the first round again, and it seemed like everybody came out ready to finally win as we were hitting almost every shot that we put up. Unfortunately, the same was true for Tulane, so this one was most likely going to turn into a shootout. Justin Copeland's best play might have come on defense because it gave us a three-point lead over the green wave, and not only did we maintain it going Going into the half, but we continued to extend our lead from there as well. It wasn't enough to allow us to break away, but it did give us a secure blanket throughout the second, and Tulane just wasn't able to overcome it because senior John Cummings was in his bag today. The Green Wave were so shook they were committing stupid turnovers, and hats off to Tulane for the fight that they put up, but it wasn't enough in the end, as we finally escaped the first round again, and I was thrilled about it. Next up was going to be Arkansas though, and we had to win so we didn't see 
Eric Musselman take his shirt off, so John Cummings came out cooking everybody on the court. However, the Razorbacks were shooting even better than Tulane did, so it's a good thing that junior Adam Randall, aka Small Zach Eady, was keeping us in it. His long arms forced a huge steal here, and Elias Witt almost tied it up to end the half, but it rimmed out, so fortunately, we were still able to crawl our way back into it to take a one-point lead. Shooting guard Justin Copeland was drilling three after three, and he was making sure we kept it close with the Razorbacks, but with about a minute remaining, we'd end up falling back behind by two, so John Cummings immediately stepped up and took it straight to the hoop. Manu Bracey even forced a defensive stop by swatting this one away, but Justin Copeland would lose the ball while trying to give us a lead, so instead of potentially winning, we then fell behind by two, and John Cummings panicked, turning the ball over with five seconds remaining and causing our season to end early once again. Kansas won their second straight title, and then we received an invite to the Big Ten, but we also lost five of our best players, and we were no longer favored to win our conference, so this felt like it could end up being a down year. We ended up going just 20 and 10, and this was the first headline I saw after simming. Luckily, we made a run in the Big Ten Conference Tournament, and we had a chance to win it against Michigan, so we needed to if we wanted to get ourselves a better tournament seed, but the Wolverines had themselves a good team, making this electrifying slam from sophomore Manu Bracey very important because it swung all the momentum in our direction. With a minute left in the half, we took our first lead of the game, and small forward Manu Bracey would continue to extend it with tough buckets. Even though he was 6 foot 10, he could also shoot the ball, and he was by far the best offensive player this team had since Marquise Warwick. It looked like we were going to win our first Big Ten championship, and isn't it crazy that we joined a real conference before Gonzaga? It ended up finishing a little closer than expected, but we still won by 5, and this is what we needed going into the tournament. We'd end up getting a really tough draw, but I believe this team can win it all, and I also believe in myself to predict NFL players' season projections correctly using prize picks, today's video sponsor. I'm gonna select three players that will go for more than their season projections, and I know it's far out, but I'm just in a football mood. The first one I'm choosing is T-Law with Calvin Ridley returning, and then I gotta back my Colts, Jonathan Taylor. Lastly, I think Justin Jefferson smashes it for another season, and Prize Picks is available in over 30 states, along with offering almost every single sport. So when you join Prize Picks to make predictions on plays like these, make sure you use code board to double your initial deposit up to $100, and go in with small amounts, boys. Please make sure you play responsibly. And now let's see how we do in the tournament. We have had a lot of slow starts and recent March Madness showings, so it was very important that it didn't happen to us today. And despite being just a sophomore, Manu Bracey was leading this team, showing that the redshirt year he took was really paying off. I mean, he was dominating the game on every single front with 11 of our first 15 points coming from him, and I couldn't believe they continued to leave him wide open. We were shooting 75% from the field, so Providence came out in the second half a little more aggressive, but the one player they refused to guard was Manu Bracey, so we were able to cruise to a first round win over the Friars, and Manu Bracey could legitimately be the best player in the country. He went for 25 points, and our next opponent is Duke, who is a 5 seed, and they came out a little more prepared to stop our star player, but that was okay because it freed up space for other guys to step up, and Manu Bracey ended the first half with an aggressive bucket to tie it up, which the Blue Devils did not seem to take very well. It was his world, and everybody else on the court was just living in it, as he evaded around the defense and forced a massive and one here. We were now on a 9-0 run, and thick and bold KD continued to put on a show. Duke managed to keep throwing up shots that went in though, so senior Elias Witt taking it to the hoop was very important. They'd score, but we would respond right back with buckets of our own, and we were headed on to the Sweet 16, where we would have to take on one seeded Villanova. It was already a back and forth game incredibly early on, and I was really impressed with how point guard Bill Olsen was shooting. So far, he was having himself a day with the way he was playing, and it was freeing up space for Manu Brucey to also score at ease. Our shooting had been incredible in the first half, and we had ourselves a four point lead while coming out in the second, continuing to drain our threes, which made it look like we were on pace to go back to the Elite Eight. However, Jay Wright's team wasn't willing to go away without a fight, and that just made Manu Bracey step up even more than he already had. The Wildcats were trying to avoid an earlier exit than expected, and this bucket would bring them within just two possessions, but fortunately, we never let them get any closer to beating us than that because they just weren't able to get their final shots to fall allowing us to move on to the lead eight. Our next opponent was Creighton, 
Dayton, and we were one of the lowest seeds remaining, but if we won this game, we could go to the Final Four for the first time, and ever since the loss to Kansas four seasons back, we had been waiting for this chance. Manu Bracey could very well go on to the NBA draft after this year, so this could actually be Northern Kentucky's last opportunity to win it all, but Creighton got it back within five as the buzzer sounded to end the half, so I decided we were going to come out in the second firing away on all cylinders, because we had to win this game, but no matter how well we played on defense, the Blue Jays still managed to continue to score. With two and a half minutes remaining, it was a very tight game, and this would end up being the last bucket we scored in the second half, which wasn't good since with 50 seconds left, Creighton was only behind by two, and then with 10 seconds left, they'd miss a shot, grab their rebound, and put it back up to tie it all up at 31. This should have given us a chance to go for the win, but we turned it over, and instead it gave Creighton opportunity to knock us out, but luckily it went to overtime instead, and I couldn't believe we had blown our lead putting ourselves in this position, but now we were stuck in a neck and neck battle with two seated Creighton, and I didn't want the ball in anybody else's hands besides Manu Bracey. He would foul out on the next possession though, which could change everything, because our offense now had to go through players like Bill Olsen, and the only reason we would hold on to our lead was because of our defense. It got the job done time and time again, so we made our first ever Final Four and we left Creighton in shambles. The last few games were officially set though, and I couldn't believe we had to play against Kentucky. Only one of these teams would represent the state in the national championship, and the Wildcats came out playing with some fire, so fortunately Bill Olsen decided to have his best game yet, because if we wanted to win today, we had to keep hitting threes, and the way we were shooting with confidence was amazing. Manu Bracey was clearly the best player in the entire tournament, and after going up by double digits, it's hard to imagine it could go wrong, but Kentucky ended up going on a 10-2 run to bring it within three, and that was our wake-up call to get back to work. Manu Bracey used his strength and speed to draw fouls, causing and one plays, which should have been enough, but the Wildcats were not missing. So fortunately, Bill Olsen put his head down and drew a much-needed foul with 18 seconds left, and Kentucky was never able to recover from that deficit, so we were headed to the national championship where we would be playing against UCLA. It was very hard to get to this spot, but with this roster, I felt like we could make the most out of it, and we ended up getting off to a pretty solid start, because shooting guard Justin Copeland was draining everything he threw up, and Manu Gracie gave two guys a messy facial with this slam. I honestly couldn't believe they kept leaving Justin Copeland open, but I wasn't complaining because he was almost our entire offense right now, and going into the half with this shot, we were up by seven. It felt like we had outplayed UCLA so far, but they kept hitting ridiculous shots like this to stay in it, so the solution was to just let Manu Gracie go to work one-on-one, -on -one, and he was doing so with this sequence of shots being a great example of it. He got his own rebound, which led to him forcing an and one play, but the broom simply would not go away, and I couldn't imagine blowing our lead now with it all on the line. Bill Olsen did make a mistake leaving someone wide open for three, but he would end up making up for it on the other end by getting it right back, and with 25 seconds remaining, Justin Copeland made sure we stayed ahead by two possessions, which was great because at this point we should be good, as Bill Olsen was a fantastic free throw shooter, making sure we actually won the national championship. I couldn't believe I got Northern Kentucky one of them, but I had set them up to be the next Gonzaga, and my career stats were extremely impressive.